All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Bailey DeSells, and today I will be giving a lecture on the Federal Theater Project. So, first, I want to talk about what is the Federal Theater Project? Well, it was established in 1935 by Hallie Flanagan. It was part of the Work Progress Administration program that was established after the Great Depression to bring jobs to jobless people. The Federal Theater Project provided jobs to theater workers and performers throughout the nation and paid them $23.86 a week, which is equivalent to $461.31 today. This program came at a time when professional theater in America was started. It was a time when theater funding was non existed was non existent and folks who worked in theater were all, all out of a job. By creating this program for federal for theater workers, this was a sign to the American people that theater was a valued and necessary um, component of life. So on this next slide here I have a quote from Hallie Flanagan that says on average. 10,000 workers earned enough to support themselves and four dependents over the four years. So this just kind of puts into perspective um, how important the federal theater program was in getting folks back on their feet and providing them with a good and stable income. And so now that we kind of have an idea of what the federal theater project was, I would like to get into the impact it had on American theater and um, all Americans at the time. In some ways, the Federal Theater Project saved American theater. It provided people with the job in the arts when there were no other positions. This program allowed creativity to thrive in a way because funds were plentiful and coming from the federal government. This program brought theater to many different regions in the United States that may not have been able to have access to performances of this level before. And on top of that, all the performances through the Federal Theater Project were free to the public. So this um, form of entertainment could be accessed freely by those of any income level. I also think it's important here to note that the Federal Theater Project not only helped theater workers and performers, but the community as a whole. After the Great Depression, many people felt the country was stuck in an unstable place. And bringing back theater was a sign to the nation that we were going in the right direction. And we know that because we have the funds to allocate towards entertainment rather than just providing food and um, necessary funds to people in need. The Federal Theater Program did not only provide entertainment, but also security and hope to communities. The Library of Congress testifies in an article that art in, federal th in the Federal Theater Project's presence symbolized that the country is stabilizing. Coming off the heels of the Great Depression, stability was wildly important for communities to see. This program also provided many opportunities to black theater artists of the time. Because of segregation, black and white theater workers weren't allowed to work together. And because this was a federal job, it was strictly enforced. This allowed for black um, theaters in major cities to become federal jobs that paid stable and good wages, something that wasn't really seen before um, in American theater. So let's move on to the next slide here. Before the creation of the Federal Theater Project, many Black artists were overlooked in the theater world. This program allowed Black artists to come to the forefront and create at the highest level and be paid well for it. Black artists were paid the same as white artists as long as they agreed to the terms of segregation. There were many acclaimed performances that came out of the Federal Theater Project that were made entirely by Black artists. Um, one that is most often referenced when researching is Voodoo Macbeth, which you can see a picture of right here on the screen. It was very popular um, and it was a big success in New York at the time. Um, living newspapers were also often proposed to be performed by Black theater artists within the Federal Theater Program. These performances were often put on by white performers and would incorporate real life news into performance. So they're basically stagings of real life things that were happening currently in the news. This is where some con controversy within the Federal Theater Project begins. In an article by Paul Nadler, he discusses why living newspapers were never performed by black artists and it se seems to stem entirely from Congress restricting black artists. So within the Federal Theater Project, because it was a federal program, all, um, all performances that were original had to be approved by Congress and the federal level to be performed. And none of the living newspaper projects um, proposed by black artists were ever approved, even though many were written. 
Black artists had written um, living newspaper performances based off of lynchings that had happened in the South and other violence inflicted on Black people. This did not go over well with Congress as they thought putting this on stage would be promoting desegregation and supporting anti-lynching bills that the Senate was negotiating. And though the Federal Theater Project overall was a huge success, there was a lot of pushback from Congress in the final days of the program. Along with allegations that Black performers were trying to push desegregation, Congress also felt that the program was promoting communist ideologies. Funds for the program were terminated in 1939 due to these allegations. So a big reason I chose the Federal Theater Project um, for my lecture is because of the current state of theater, being that we are in a, in a pandemic. The Federal Theater Program um, came when the United States was in shambles and looking to pick itself back up. We once again find ourselves in a simil similar situation and in need of picking back up. With Congress currently looking to get the US back to normalcy through legislation, it may be worth it to find a new federal theater program. If we've learned anything from the last federal theater program, it is that federal funding is what theater needs to survive in a time of crisis. The federal theater program did have its issues, but as a whole, the program was received and executed positively and provided security not only to theater workers, but the nation as a whole. This project reignited the theater sector in the 1930s and brought, um, and brought jobs and opportunities to people who may not have gotten them otherwise. The federal theater program was important and so is federal support, of, um, federal support by the government of theater. In an article from February by Gerald Raymond Pierce, he discusses how um, once most people are vaccinated, we could take similar steps to those taken by the Federal Theater Project to revive theater in America. These steps need to be taken not only by American government, but also by unions within theater. So steps like providing federal funding and housing to theater workers and providing a weekly wage while also um, allowing performances to be free to the public so that access once again um, can, so these plays can be seen once again by people of all income levels. Um, by bringing back um, theater that is funded nationally, we are once again sending the signal that the country is stabilizing like we did after the Great Depression. All right. So with all of that being said, if you take nothing else away from um, today, please take that government support of the arts is of national importance. When national government puts funding into theater, we're saying, hey, we need this, the country needs this, making this thing indisposable. Theater is often discounted as a non-necessity, but with government backing, this claim becomes invalid. That is why we need government support for the arts. And now I have some questions for you. So what do you think? Do you think enough was done or did the Federal Theater Project go too far? And could we reintroduce this program today into today's theater scene to stimulate um, <laughs> to stimulate theater after the pandemic. Please let me know what you think and thank you so much. Oh, stop recording.